Hey guys, it's Linda Winter. I have another fun project. This is a Winter Designs template, a new one, and it's on white, white and black. They both are the same thing, same material, gray or brown, basically the same material, no slipping, no kidding. When I go to grab, you can see how that grabs. So this template is the boxy knot bag. And you notice you can read it pretty well without having to use one of the metallic markers. You can, if you want, use a metallic marker to highlight these like I do on a lot of my black templates, but with the white, they show up a little bit better. This is um, one of those things that's kind of a specialty thing, so I don't have access to this all the time, but whenever I do, I'm gonna try to have templates made with this white. Okay, so a boxy knot bag. What the box is, is the box to bottom that's there. Most knot bags, if you made a knot bag, they're called Japanese knot bags. Most of them have kind of a squared bottom or rounded bottom. This you can see on the template, we've got the cutouts there, these cut marks that are there that lets the blade get right inside of there. But I am gonna show you how to make the one with the square bottoms. And I'm gonna show you how to make one with the rounded bottom too. So if you'd like to do that, or if you're making a whole bunch of these, then this of course is gonna be faster. The round one will be a little bit faster than the boxy one, but I love the boxy one just because it holds so much. So this guy here, if you don't know the Japanese knot bag, this goes inside and then it hangs off of your wrist. This guy here to me is just like the perfect size for running around town, for doing a couple errands, for when you don't want to carry a big purse, when you don't have a ton of stuff, but it is going to hold quite a bit. And when you've got the box bottom on there, it's going to hold it nice and upright too. So this guy here, this cotton, cotton, I have a cotton and it's kind of a linen here. What I used here, which I love, I used it here and I used it here. This material here, it's a tablecloth. So you guys know probably I love to recycle. You know, I'm a cheapskate, but it's also great for the environment too. So use those materials that you have already in your closets that maybe you were gonna donate. Well, donate it to your sewing room. You can see how this, this one's a little bit taller here. And this guy here tucks inside so that now we've got this nice handle. So this is a tablecloth. This is a tablecloth. This is a tablecloth, but you can use cotton and cotton. And if you notice what I did here, I've got a grommet. This is gonna be part two. We're gonna do a second video that'll show you how to do the grommet. This was the reason why I did this template. When I had this idea of maybe this would work, then it became, a, I gotta make that template. Do you see the grommet that's there? And we're going to use the same concept, this right here. Let me plop this over and show you. This doesn't lay down flat because of that grommet. And I've got a fold here instead of a seam here. So we're gonna make it a little bit differently, but it's gonna be pretty similar. And I just think that's a really cool feature. If you're making things to give as a really nice gift, if you're making things to sell, then the grommet is a great way to go. But if you're trying to make a ton of them, you've gotta buy the grommet. You've gotta install the grommet. It's actually very easy. So I'll show you how to do that in the second video. But cotton, cotton. This I've used SF-101, SF-101 on the outer layer. With this one, I didn't use SF-101 at all because I had this tablecloth material. So this is just fabric with the tablecloth material. This is a tablecloth, a tablecloth. And you can see it's pretty floppy, but it still holds its shape. You can see the bottom that's there, and you can see when I fold that down, that nice shape that's there. So it looks like it's kind of got the curve or the angle there, but that's your box bottom. I want to pull over these two, though, because this is, I think, where you can really see the difference. So I've got this stuff with some of my little goodies here just to hold shape. Cotton fabric, and then this and this, these are shower curtains. I talked about this one in my Valentine's Day video. If you haven't watched it, even if it's past Valentine's when you're watching this, go watch it because I'm showing you a bunch of projects that you can do for whatever occasion. So this is a shower curtain, this is a shower curtain. This is cotton fabric, this is cotton fabric. But what's the difference here, you can see, let me plop all of this stuff out, and let me plop all of this stuff out, this still has shape and substance to it, and you can see that's flopping over. 
SF-101 on the back of here, we'll talk about ironing here in a minute because it's a shower curtain, I talked about it before. This has, instead of SF-101, it has a fusible fleece. Now I have this on my website, I love this stuff. See how lightweight that is? It's fusible on one side, I can feel how rough that is. That versus this, this is the SF-101. You can actually do the two of these. So if you had regular cotton fabric and cotton fabric and you like the idea of this stability, you can put this on either the outside or the inside. The inside sometimes looks nice just because it gives the bag a little substance, but then you can put this on the other fabric. So these two in combination, because this is a shower curtain and I used SF-101 SF on this one, but the fusible fleece on this one, that one does hold its shape. So I think it looks nicer. And the method that I'm gonna teach you makes both of these whichever of these that you want to do easy. Now I don't recommend this project with foam. You don't need foam. Foam is going to end up giving it that shape and when you tuck that inside of there it's just going to look kind of funky. So I love this fusible fleece. I just think that's such a cool material. Okay, so let's talk about if you do use a shower curtain. Shower curtains you can find, you know, in your own closet, but you can also find them on sale. You can find them at garage um, sales, those kinds of things, estate sales, but do you see how that just really stands? We cannot iron on this, and I talked about this in my previous video. If we're going to iron, then you've got to use one of the Teflon pressing sheets, and even so, you you don't want to spend a ton of time pressing. What we're trying to do when we press is put something on. So you can put the SF-101 or the fusible fleece on this fabric or you can put it on here. I put it on the outside because I like it on the outside. If you put that on the outside, this part here that's got that bumpiness, that needs to be raised up when you go to press. So if I've got this fabric sitting on top of there, then it is critically important to put this on when you're pressing. The reason why I like to have this fusible side up, the bumpiness side up, is that heat is melting that glue. That's the bumpiness stuff. It's melting the glue a little bit faster than if I had this down and then had my fabric underneath. So just be aware if you're using something like this, if you're using, I love the idea of doing out of scarves or doing out of your clothing or doing out of, you know, some fabric that may have some issues. You don't want to do that without having one of the Teflon sheets. And I sell these Teflon sheets in two different sizes. You may already have one. I hope you do because I think they're just really, really valuable. All right, so I'm gonna get this one out of the way because we're not gonna do that one now. That's gonna be in the second video. All right, so I wanted to choose a more masculine fabric. I think this would be really cute to hold a bunch of boys' toys or whatever. You could use blue jeans, you could use duck cloth, you can use canvas. You know, if you do any of those, then you don't need SF-101 and Monkey's here checking it out. Come on, Monkey, let's go. All right, so I've put SF-101 on the back of both of these. This is gonna be my outer fabric. And you can see I haven't fused really well here. We'll get to that. And if I do need to go back and fuse again, I will. This is going to be my lining and it's just a plain old cotton fabric. And I haven't used any interfacing on here. So totally up to you if you want to do that. Once you make one, you'll know what it is stability wise that you want. All right. So what I want you to do is place the template on. This is a fat quarter friendly project. So if you have fat quarters, this is a really great thing for fat quarters as well. So I've got two pieces of fabric that I've st stacked right sides together. I want to do right sides together because right inside of here, I'm going to ask you to take a pen and just go in and we're just going to draw along here. Now, the 45 millimeter rotary cutter, it's going to have a harder time cutting right inside of there. The 28 millimeter, if you have one, it does a pretty good job, but you still may end up missing. So a pen and some scissors are going to help you out quite a bit there. All right, so I've got my no slip material on the back side of this. So when I go to cut, I've got my rotary cutter open. I'm going to cut and I turn that template. And you can see when I turn, I don't have to worry about a paper template. I don't have to worry about anything moving on me. I'm just going to cut. I cut one of the sides, one of the sides. Those are our tops that we're going to be sewing together. I'm going to cut a side there. And I'm going to go on down to the boxed corners. Now, right inside of here is the cut mark. That allows my blade to go right inside. And just hold on to that template as you go to cut so that allows you to back out of that easily. 
And whenever you're using a template like this, just put your hand close by. And if you notice, I have a Band-Aid on my finger. It's a nail that fell off. I haven't cut myself or anything like that. But my hand is not here when I cut. So my hand is over here or over here. That way, if I do end up going on top, I'm not going to damage my fingers. So you can see right there, I've got a couple threads. So I'm going to go right inside of there. And that's where your scissors are going to come in handy, too, for cutting. And I was able to cut that out. OK, back to the inside. We've made those marks for us, so I'm going to go ahead and place right here. And we've cut this side, so I don't want my fabric moving. If you did choose to use one of the shower curtains or if you've used a, you know, a nice silkier fabric and you put some interfacing on the back, it might have slid underneath here. So when you're here, put your fingers close by. We're going to cut to where the template basically says stop. And then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to cut over here. See how I'm hitting into that? We don't want to push so hard. Now, when I go to cut, let's take a look at what the 45 millimeter lets me do. It lets me take my time and I'm able to cut and I actually did pretty well there, but I'm going to continue on. And do you see how that didn't get right there? I'm going to swap out and I'm going to go to my 28 millimeter and the 28 millimeter lets me get right inside. I'm going to move my template if I have to move in a different direction to be able to get in close. Do you see how I'm going to move? And I want to, let's go back and take a closer look. I'm going to move this way. Depending on whether you're left-handed or right-handed, we want to get that cutter close by. And Sylvester's decided to join us now. Let's see if we can go ahead and cut without her being in the way. And as I go to cut, you can see I've still got a couple little edges there. I'm going to go in with my rotary cutter and see if I can get those out. The 28 millimeter does a pretty good job of getting into those curves. But I still like the idea of you going ahead and cutting or drawing with your pen. So if you don't have one of the 28 millimeters, you can get in right inside of there and cut with your scissors. All right, let's get those scraps out of the way. I'm going to get this out of the way. And we're going to look to see what it is that we have. All right, I've got my two pieces here. And my fusible, remember when I said I didn't fuse the edge down? Well, I cut that piece away, so it's not that big of a deal. All right. Oh, and look right there, though. That is a big deal, so we do want to. And look, you see right there where I missed that top edge? So we do want to go fix that. Don't know how that happened, but we've got a rotary cutter. We'll fix it. That's the nice thing about the no-slip material when we go to cut. I'm just going to go right in, and we'll cut that, and we'll cut that. Okay. And I am going to press that a little bit. And you notice, too, Right here from my selvage, you may not be able to see, but the little holes there, perfect. You can see that. That's part of my seam allowance, so I'm not so worried about that. Right up here at the top, that may actually show a little bit. So when you're choosing your fabrics, get yourself a big enough piece that you don't have to worry about that. I'm going to go ahead and press here. And because I've got my fusible already cut to the right size, I can go ahead and press here. If I had fusible here and over here, that's when I'd want to get that um, the sheet right on top of there. OK, so we're going to do this a little differently than what you've done before. If you've seen the um, knot bag templates or the knot bag um, projects or any kind of bag where we've got straps. Normally, what they have you do is sew your bottoms and then you're stitching the tops of these at the sewing machine, having to turn these under and then top stitching the sides together. If you don't know what I mean, good, because it's a pain. So I wanted to come up with a way where we didn't have to worry about that. So I'm going to show you a little bit different method. What we want to do is start with right sides together of my outer fabric. And I'm going to take a pin. You can use pins or clips. I actually prefer pins on this because of the method that we're going to do. The pins just, I think, make it a little bit easier for getting in and doing some of the things that we're doing. I pinned and pinned my two straps. Remember, we have a longer strap and we have a shorter strap. This fabric doesn't really have a right side or a wrong side, so I'm not so worried about that. And you can see right over here, I've got a little bit less fabric than I have there. It's my lining. So when we get to that, I need to remember to have a wider seam allowance there. My lining does need a little bit wider seam allowance because it doesn't have the fusible that I have on here. 
I always push the boundaries. Are you guys like me, where you're always trying to get away with things? This material, no slipping, no kidding, on our templates doesn't make up for the fact that sometimes we do little cheater things like that. See that right there? Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to sew this down. We're going to sew this down. Sew that down. Sew that down. You can use a quarter inch seam allowance. You can use a three eighths seam allowance. It's totally up to you. I've designed it for a quarter inch, but it's, again, totally up to you. I have my zipper foot on because later on when we do our top stitching, I'm going to be taking advantage of that. And we want to go ahead and stitch and back stitch when you start and stop. And my sewing machine is not liking this so much today. I've been sewing a lot today. And did I clean my foot or put in a new needle or anything like that? No. So that's kind of one of those things, maintenance 101 that you want to do. And again, if you're like me, you probably don't do it nearly as often as you should. So, you know, one of those things. The other thing too, is when you do a project like this, match your threads. I've chosen to do white because I want you all to see what I'm doing here. And the stiletto that I have would be a really great thing for me to use right now because it's not wanting to grab. And this probably is, at this point, a better project to do with your regular foot. <clears throat> but I had my zipper foot on last because I was doing top stitching. So I probably would put on my zipper foot. I'm going to go ahead and sew that again, or put on my regular uh, foot. All right, we're going to sew this again because it did kind of eat up my fabric a little bit there. Okay, so what we want to do is trim that down. You can use pinking shears. You can use scissors. You don't have to trim this down, but I don't want the bulk because we're going to be sewing front to back or lining to outside fabric, and we don't want to have all that bulk here. Again, most of the projects, if you've ever seen any of the videos or you've ever made these, most of the projects do not have you sewing your straps together. That's one of those things that you do later on, or if it does have you sewing the straps together, you're not sewing this part. So this method that I have, I love. This is a very similar method to my bottle bag template. If you've seen my bottle bag template, that's a really great project to do, and we're kind of cheating with that when we do the tops here, when we do those handles. Again, I don't want to have to join those. I don't think they look as good when you join them and try to join. And I say try to join because most of the time we don't do such a great job of that. This is also similar to the method that I do with one of my towel toppers, the little girl dress. Okay, so what have I done? I've pressed this a little bit with my finger. I pressed this a little bit. I'm gonna press this a little bit with my finger. And what we wanna do here, I've got my stiletto too, this stiletto. If you didn't cut those um, seams there, this stiletto would be really great for you to press open. I'm just pressing to the side and I'm gonna press from the back side here. This flat edge that's here just does a really good job. And notice I'm working on the right side of this. Okay, so I mentioned pins and what we wanna do we're gonna line these up, and if you notice, I've got a lot of fabric here and not much fabric here. That's what makes the knot bag the knot bag. What I wanna do is pin inside and stitch all the way around. So we're gonna start at the top of our handles here, and I think I am gonna switch out my foot just because my machine seems to be wanting my regular foot. Now, if you're smart about your pinning process, you could actually pin further along. And what that allows you to do is keep those pins in as you sew. I'm not, just because it's one more thing that I have to remove. And notice here, just line up those seams. Take your time to make sure those are lined up nice and straight, nice and even. And when I did the shower curtain fabric, because it was very slippery, I pinned and pinned and pinned a lot. So if you are doing a material that is very, very slippery, pin a lot more than you would normally do. And again, if you're into clips, do the clips too. It's totally up to you. This part is not so critical for pins versus clips, but when we get a little bit further on, I'll talk about where those pins are a little bit more important. All right. This opening may be, if you've done the knot bag, 
If you've seen the knot bag, it's a little bit wider than a lot of the knot bags. And I like that because it allows me to get more in there easily. Some of the bags that have a smaller opening, they're harder to get in and out. So I made it a little bit wider than what's there. All right, so basically you can see, this is the longer strap here. This is my shorter strap. We're gonna stitch all the way inside. You can use your pinking shears to go in and cut if you wanna do that, or you can use your snippets and snip, snip, snip at the curves. All right, so I'm gonna swap out my foot, put my other foot on my machine, and then we'll put that zipper foot on back when we talk about doing top stitching. The top stitching part is the part that really, you know, that foot makes a big difference. If you have a top stitching foot, terrific. That's a great one to be able to use. All right, I'm gonna move my needle position to the center. And I'm using a 2.6 seam allowance. You can use anywhere from a 2.4 to whatever, but we don't want at this point a long stitch and we don't need it so short either. Again, if you're working with like a vinyl or if you're working with a shower curtain or something like that, you know, where it might have some issues. All right, so I'm just gonna hold my needle in place a little bit there instead of back stitching. And we're getting close to where we started. And I'm just gonna overstitch that a little bit. Now, at the sewing machine, we're moving over to our table so we can, again, with our pinking shears, go in and clip, 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 pink, pink on that whole area, or we can go in and do this. And we'll go ahead and speed this process up so you don't have to see me doing all of this. All right, so we've gone ahead and just done some snips around here again, pinking shears if you wanna do that. Now what we wanna do is go ahead and turn one side, it doesn't matter which one, so that the wrong sides are facing. So I'm just basically flipping this guy inside. And as I do that, I'm gonna pull a little bit and that just opens up the seam because this is gonna be my finished seam. And again, that's where using the zipper foot or a top stitching foot later, not now, because we have some important stuff to do before we do the top stitching. But I'm just giving this a little bit of pull as I'm gonna be bringing this through. Inside, can you see how I'm pulling that inside the opening? And again, I'm just pulling. We do wanna do some pressing now, Pressing during this process is gonna be a whole lot more important than later because it's really hard to get in and press after this little boxy knot bag is done. So we are gonna take the time to press. So I'm gonna go over to my iron here and we'll just press a little bit. And I'm gonna start with the opening at the widest areas and just kind of press in one direction and then we're just gonna finger press a little bit. That stiletto works really well for this too. But again, we really do wanna use the iron here. Now, if you wanted to make your lining a little bit bigger or make it so that it looks like a faux binding, that's a cool look too. The problem with that is you've gotta be consistent. So I typically won't do that. Top stitching with a heavier weight thread, of course, is gonna look really nice but I usually don't take the time to swap out my threads. But again, if you're making these to sell, if you're gonna be giving these as the one really nice gift, then, you know, assembly line these. And then when you get to that finishing process, then go ahead and pull out the top stitching thread. Top stitching needle works really well for that too. They go hand in hand, so totally up to you. All right, and all I'm doing at this point is just making sure that my lining is basically tucked inside. I've already gotten half of my strap done by doing our neck area, that opening area here. And again, most methods, when you go watch those videos or if you've made these before, you'll see that that's not always the way that it's done. And when you see what we do next, with the tucking and rolling and pinning, it's kind of a cool way to finish off the straps. 
I really like it. I'm not much for, if you guys know me, I'm not much for the detail work. I don't really like to take my time on projects. I'm a getter dunner, you know, but even if you are a perfectionist, I really think that you're gonna like this method. And you may already know about this method, but it wasn't one that I'd seen. And I watched a lot of videos when I started thinking about making this template just to see how many people like the boxy bottom, which I really like. I think it's a lot more practical of a bag. It just holds your stuff a little bit better to me. I can get to that stuff easier. I'm not a big purse person. So if I am gonna carry something, I like to be able to get to my stuff pretty easily. And to have that box bottom, I just think it does a, it's just, it's a nicer look to this bag to me. All right, so I'm just gonna continue to work around and press. And you can see a little bit of the green there. I would take the time and just kind of, you know, press that out, but you get the idea. I'll still have another chance to press. So it's not like this is my only chance, but we do wanna take the time just to do this part of the pressing right now, because again, this is gonna make a difference in the final look. All right, we're gonna put this back on the table. And it doesn't matter which side you start with, but this is where I wanna have pins. All right, you can use a pen instead of a pin. You can use a pen or you can use scissors for this. But what we're gonna do is fold this in half and we have to define the strap. Let me pull over this bag. And what do I mean by define the strap? Right here, you can see this strap here. You can see this strap here. I want this over here to be pretty. And this is one that I haven't top stitched. Let me grab one that I did top stitch. I top stitched the inside around here, but I didn't top stitch here. Let me grab this one where I top stitched both. All right, you can see right here, this area here, this area over here, we want to define that area. I want this right here to be pretty, this opening here to be pretty. So the method that I'm going to show you will allow you to get that. All right, so what have I done? I've got my fold here, I've got my fold here, I've got my bottoms basically lined up. And I wanna look at lining up on my mat. So this is my center right here. And you can see that strap's pretty straight, that strap's pretty straight. And what I wanna do now is use something like a ruler. And you can see I'm lining that up on my marking. Here's my center that's here. And I basically wanna put a mark here and a mark here. You can do marks or you can do with your scissors. And remember this opening right here, you can see that that's gotta be part of my seam allowance that I've gotta take into consideration. That's gonna be past the mark, so we'll deal with that later. That's my lining, and I'm gonna be sewing that a little bit differently. But what I'm gonna do here is just snip. And I don't wanna go too far, but do you see how I've snipped one, two, three, four? All right, so we've snipped those there. That's gonna be where I start. All right, so we're gonna line that back up again. And I'm basically going to hold with my template that ruler that's there. And I'm just going to take it off of the table a little bit and then snip. You can mark with a pen if you want to. It's just sometimes those marks are harder to see. All right, so I've grabbed these two. We're going to go a little bit further. All right, and I can actually go further because of that guy that's there. All right, so you can see I've cut those. I barely cut that and I barely cut that one. So let's cut through that last one. And again, pen, marks, pins, whatever it is that you want. All right, right in there. Okay, so those markings are gonna come in really handy for this process. All right, so again, it doesn't matter whether I start here or I start here. Either way, I'm gonna start on the shorter side, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna bring right sides facing up. And what I wanna do is tuck. This guy here, I'm basically gonna be tucking and folding and rolling and whatever. You don't have to do it neatly. What I wanna do is get this, all that excess bulk, inside of here. All right, so I've got my seam here and I've got my seam here and we're gonna be pinning there and pinning to where that cut is. 
those two pieces there and that cut is over here. All right, so I wanna do that again, just so you guys can see. It doesn't matter again which side, the shorter side or the longer side, but we're working with right sides up. I'm gonna fold these guys here and just kind of roll this. And again, tuck neatly or not, this is all gonna go inside. And you can see my first time was neater than this one, but the bottom line is I wanna get these two right here and here pinned together. We're gonna to be stitching that down and not stitching any of this. So this area right here, I just wanna make sure that that's all tucked in neatly. We're gonna start at the seams so that our handles are gonna look nice. I'm gonna put a pin in there and we're gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance because this is a handle and we're gonna be pulling all of this out. So this is not where you wanna use a half an inch or three eighths of an inch seam allowance, a quarter of an inch. All right, so I'm gonna put a pin here. I can feel the bulk of this fabric, the rest of this back this way. Where those two cuts are, I wanna go ahead and bring those together. And if they're not lining up perfectly here, I can readjust, see that that I have here? I'm gonna go back and look to see, and do you see how that moved a little bit? So I'm gonna reposition some of this, but those cut marks were just estimates. They were just guess marks, and they don't have to be lined up perfectly. It's more important that your seam allowance or that your um, topping um, of your straps matches up. All right, so now we're going on the other side. And again, I can feel that this is all this way. And this is SF101 that I have here as my interfacing, but remember I used that fusible fleece and I had no problem doing this process with that fusible fleece either. All right, so there are my cut marks over here. So all of this from the cut marks to the cut marks we're gonna sew. And again, all of that is tucked inside. So I'm gonna make sure right inside of there that I can feel that's where I have all of that extra strap there. And I'm just gonna make sure if you even wanna do a little pin here to keep that out of the way. It's not anywhere close, but we can keep that out of the way so we're not gonna grab any of that. All right, we're gonna start at those cut marks. The cut marks are actually gonna be the beginning of the straps where they separate and the bottom is gonna be the side. All right, so at the sewing machine, again, my seam allowance is about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna go ahead and just hold that in place a little bit instead of back stitching. And as I stitch, get that pin out of the way and make sure, cause we've got a lot of bulk here. We wanna make sure that nothing's really moved underneath. And I'm gonna leave that pin in for a second and we're past so we can get rid of that. I don't really need to stitch back and forth at the strap because there's not going to be a lot of pressure on that strap. And when I get to the edge, I do want to either back stitch or just hold that in place. And I'm just holding that in place. All right. So the one important thing to do before we turn this and have our magic is trim. I need to get rid of this excess. We don't want any of that excess when we go to pull this right sides out. And when I get to this area here, remember where we started? Let's see if we can get to it. Okay, we want to, oh, I'm trimming the other side here. Both sides of those straps, by the way. All right, I wanna show you down here when we get to the other side. All right, so this is where I started right here. So when we get to there, we just wanna veer off beforehand. Okay, so we've got a little excess there. All right, so we are going to reach inside and pull. And this is where, again, with the fusible fleece even, it works just fine. All right, so we're back at the ironing area and we wanna finagle our fabrics. We pull that out. I'm gonna press here. I'm working on the back side. You can work on the front side. We're gonna actually go from back to front. And remember how I said pressing now is a whole lot better 
than and a whole lot easier. You're going to have more result, better results doing this now along the way than waiting till this was all done. Even though this is all going to get messed up again because we're going to be twisting and turning, I want you to see that strap. All right, I have a finished edge. I have a finished edge and we're going to have a finished edge. This is what I like about this method. This is finished. I'm not having to fold this over and fold this over and press and pin, 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 and at the sewing machine, stitch those up. That's what most of the other methods have you do. I don't want to do any of that. What I want to do is, again, we're going to be opening up, right sides up. We're going to take all of this, and now I have the longer strap, so my cuts that I have here, do you see that cut mark? Way down here. We've got a lot more sewing to do on this side. There's my cut mark there. So we're going to roll this up. This side is easier to do because this, all this material that's inside of here, is not nearly as bulky. All right, remember we're looking at right sides up and I want to tuck this inside of here. And we're going to be looking at this is the right side, this is the right side, this is the right side, and over here is the right side somewhere. So we're going to make sure that we get all of that tucked inside of here. I'm going to take my pin, start at the center. You can kind of finagle this. And I've got a pin that's not very sharp. And I want to make sure that that's really tucked inside because we don't want to catch any of that. This blows the whole point of doing it this way. All right, so I'm tucking in with one finger as I go and pinning. And we're going to look for that cut mark, both of those cut marks, in a minute. And I think it's probably easier to see the cut mark on this side. Well, that green is pretty good, too. All right, so right there. And those two do line up. All right, we're going to come over to this side. And again, this is my right here. I don't really care about this and this. I care about this. I'm just making sure that all of this is tucked inside. So I'm not spending a whole lot of time there. Now, for whatever reason, this strap is wider over here. I'm okay with that. It's this back side that I'll be thinking about as I'm sewing. And again, a quarter inch seam allowance, that gives me plenty of room. All right, we're going to pin till we get to that cut area, those two cut marks that are there. And I'm feeling along the way to make sure that everything is tucked inside of there. And again, this method to me, it just gives you a nicer look. A, a, I don't know, just a, to me, it's a better result. And it is faster because I'm not having to press and I'm not having to turn under. I'm not having to go back in and, and do that top stitching that I don't think gives you as nice a result. A lot of you that are much better sewers than me, you know, you probably don't mind that method, but to me, this is faster. All right, what are we gonna do? We're gonna sew this whole side down. Remember on the other side, it was just this. So we've got more to sew here because this is that longer strap. All right, so at the sewing machine, we're gonna start where that cut mark is. And I'm gonna go ahead and just hold that needle in place, hold my fabric in place instead of back stitching. And I can feel the bulk of this strap so that it's not in the way. And we basically, you know, it's like the pillowcase method too. I hadn't even thought about, you know, referring to that. But if you all have done the pillowcases where that hot dog method, whatever you want to call it, this is basically that same kind of approach where the rest of the pillow is inside of here. So I just think it's a really nice way to just get a quicker, better result. And again, I'm just feeling over here to make sure that I'm not anywhere close to stitching on top of that. All right, we're getting close to the end and that's where the bulk of this is because all that knot bag wants to kind of pop out. And my cut mark is right here. 
All right, so basically right around that plaid, right about to there, just holding that in place. All right, back to the cutting table, and we're going to cut that excess fabric off. All right, so we're starting, instead of right here, I'm going to go a little bit further above. Make sure you don't cut anything else but that excess of the seam allowance. And when we get close to the other side, again, I'm just going to kind of trim that off so that it's not right up on top of there. Okay, so over here, I've got a little bit of seam allowance here that I want to cut off because that's part of the strap and it just makes the turning a little bit easier and it makes your strap not so bulky. We pinked or cut inside of the neck area, the opening, but we didn't really do anything about the straps. So we're just trimming that up and making it a little bit easier. All right. Okay, so we're gonna pull and again, you can see here and here, those guys there inside of here just want to start pulling. And when I start pulling, I'm going to go from the other side. We've got more to pull this time, but there's the strap. Can you see how that strap is there? And it just kind of helps me out. And I'm just going to pull and pull. And if it's not coming out right away, just reposition your hand and get in a different place. All right, what have we got? We've got a really close to being finished bag. All right, so we're gonna press here, we're gonna press here. Again, we're gonna pull here before we do the pressing because I want my seams to be open. So I'm just pulling a little bit. This is the longer side. This was the side we did previously. All right, and now at the ironing area, I'm just going to kind of finagle that down a little bit before we go pressing that. And you can see how much e easier it is to press this whole area straight. Again, this is a whole lot easier now than later when it's a bag. You'd have to use something inside of your bag you know, a tailor's ham or something like that, which I still like to use a tailor's ham on a project like this. You know, if you're doing a really nice fabric, a tailor's ham just gives it a really good quality too. Okay, so I would take the time to press a little bit more here and here, but I want you to see what we've got. We basically got our top, our opening, finished all the way around and finished here and finished here. So we need to bring our lining together and our outside together. This is the outside, this is the lining. So we're gonna take the outside and we're gonna grab these guys and we're gonna grab these guys. And see that strap that's here? We're gonna tuck that inside. I've got another strap, we're gonna tuck that inside and we're gonna start where we did those cuts. Remember the cut marks that we did? That's basically my arm. Now, we did kind of a guesstimate when we did this, so they may or may not line up perfectly, and that's okay. You can see here, I'm looking to see, there's my seam and there's my seam, and I'm gonna put a pin in here. I'm gonna come down and put a pin here. And we're gonna come over here and we're gonna take our linings. And do you see that right in there? We're gonna pin here. Okay, that's that cut. So we need to make our seam allowance here a little bit wider. You know, if you guys are like me and you kinda of wanna cheat a little bit, it's the lining. So I know with the lining that I want it to be a little bit tighter anyway. So I'm okay with that. On this side of the lining, we're gonna leave an area open here for us to turn. So when we get over there, we're gonna pin a little bit differently. All right, we're at the next side, and I'm looking to see where my joins are. Remember that strap? Let's get that out of the way. We're tucking that inside. We're gonna pin. And right now, all I'm doing is pinning. In a minute, we're gonna maybe snip. And maybe, because maybe we need it, and maybe we don't. All I'm doing is pinning my sides. 
And we're going to put a pin here, straight. And I'm going to reach inside and pull that strap out of the way because we do not want to sew that down. All right, we're going to put a pin down here. And here, we're going to put a pin this way. That's my opening. So that's going to tell me right there that I'm leaving that opening there. We're going to sew the bottoms down. We're going to sew the sides, except for that opening. We're going to box our corners. I'm going to show you how to do this project without the box corner, too. So we have two different options. So I said we're going to pin, and then I want to maybe snip. You can see I've got that snip already here, and I've got that snip already there. But if my fabric wasn't lining up, and not just lining up, but not folding correctly, where I can get to it with the sewing machine, then taking my scissors and just snipping a little bit, just so I can get to it when I get to the sewing machine. And my three-quarter oval, it's the Cute Clever Oven Mitt. I don't know if you've seen that. We're joining the mouth. It's that same kind of technique that I'm doing there, too. All right, so we're going to go in and snip here. Because we're basically trying to get something to go where it doesn't really want to go. So I'm going to clip over here. And you can actually clip a couple times if you wanted to, a couple different places. Just remember that seam allowance that you have. All right. Okay, so we're going to stitch this side here. We're going to stitch this side over here, leaving that opening. We're going to stitch the bottom. So let's get to the sewing machine. And I'm going to start at the center first. I pinned the bottom, but that doesn't mean I'm going to leave those pins where they are. I'm going to start at the center because the center side seams, those are the straps. All right, and when I get to this, I'm just kind of finagling that fabric underneath. And inside, I'm going to pull that strap around. And I've lost a pin, so let's put this pin. Is this the... Okay, this is the side that I'm sewing all the way. All right, so we're going to stitch across those side seams. Get those pins out. All right, and then that's the area that I need to have a little bit wider seam allowance here. All right, we're going to come over to this other side. And we're going to start. I'm just going to hold that in place. We still have to finish the other side down. That just lets me get those straps a little bit where I want them. And I'm moving the handle right here out of the way. I've got my hand inside of there to kind of pull it out of the way. And when I get close to this pin that's here, I'm just going to stitch and again hold that in place. I'm going to remove this pin, cut my threads, and pop down to the bottom. Hold that in place a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to go back over and finish up this bottom. And you can see, basically, I'm just making sure that everything was lined up. And I've got a thread that's caught. And then that's basically where I started. Okay, so we've got that one done. And then we're going to come over here. That's my side seam. I need to finish up this one. We'll get rid of that pin. All right, so I'm going to join my bottoms. And you can pin if you want to. We don't really need to. This is the outer fabric. And we don't need to back stitch here either because we're going to be doing those mitered corners in a minute. And those mitered corners are going to be part of that seam. All 
All right, if you want to trim off the excess, you're welcome to do that. I'm gonna do one corner of the lining and then I'm gonna do one corner of the outer fabric and then we'll fast forward through all of this. All right, what have I done? I've lined up my centers. Can you see that seam allowance that's there? I've lined that up and I pulled my fabric out. So I pulled that out, you can pin if you want to. I'm gonna just keep that nice and straight here and put my needle down and hold in place. And when I get to those center seams, I have one set of fabrics going that way and one set of fabrics going this way, one fold. And now that is where we do want to back stitch. All right, we're going to do the same thing with the lining or with the outer fabric. I'm pulling here and I'm pulling here. So I want to get all that bulk that's here. So this is all the way open. I want to get those seams lined up here and we're gonna go one way for one and one way for the other. And again, if you want to pin, you're welcome to pin. And I've got a thread that's caught. Let's see if, let's see if we can fight our way through that thread that's there. All right. I'm going to do the other side. All right, so my four corners are done. I'm going to go ahead and flip right side out. Okay, so I have a little hole that I left. And basically, we're going to be pulling all of this out. I don't want to turn the lining inside to the outer fabric yet because I want to poke out those corners and I can make this bag reversible if I want to. I'll show you on some of the others. You've got several options that you can do to make it reversible if you want to. I don't think this bag would look that great reversible, but you can. So let's go ahead and basically inside I'm going to reach in. I'm going to poke out the corners and I'm just poking out those corners and I've got eight corners that I want to poke out and make sure that they're nice and open because this will be harder to do the lining. Now I'm on the lining. This will be harder to do the lining once I put this inside. All right, so there's three, there's four. Okay, so when it comes to this edge right here, this guy here, you can pull this. We're just closing the opening. We can pull that and we can stitch that down at the sewing machine. It's not going to be reversible. If we want it to be reversible, then I can use my hand needle and stitch. I can use a permanent tape and put that inside of there. I can use a permanent glue and put that inside of there, whichever way you want to do it. I'm not going to make this reversible, so I'm just going to hold that nice and tight and back at the sewing machine. We're going to start just a little bit past or a little bit before the opening, and I'm finding the closing the area here. And I'm just holding that in place. All right, so. You would, of course, use a matching thread because that's going to look so much nicer. And again, decide if you want it to be reversible or not. All right, we're tucking inside. We're tucking inside. And you can see with just one layer of SF-101, this doesn't have a whole lot of stability. So if you do want it to have a lot of shape to it, then you can use the fusible fleece on both sides. You can use the fusible fleece on one side and the SF-101 on one of the other sides. So you decide what kind of a look you want. All right, remember all those times that I kept saying it was so much easier to press before? We're gonna press now, but it's a whole lot harder for me to get in inside here and press. I'm just pressing right now my lining. And if you have a ham, a ham would be great to put inside of here to be able to press the edges, the outside, the box corners, all of that. But let's take a look at what we've got. Imagine we've taken the time to press here really well, and we've got our little bag. 
All right, I'm going to bring this down so you can see. But basically, this here is going to tuck inside of there. And let's see. How cute is that? Okay. All right, so do you have a boy that would put their trucks, their cars, their toys, their whatever inside of here, their marbles and all of that? I mean, I think it's adorable. And I think having that with all their goodies inside and on their wrist, I mean, how cool is that? All right, so... Last thing is optional. You can start right at the edge there where we've joined this and edge stitch all the way around. That's where an edge stitch foot or top stitching foot, I was using my zipper foot earlier, right inside of here, stitching along those edges. You decide if you want to do that. I do think it gives it a much nicer look. I would use a matching thread or again, a heavier weight thread I think would look really nice but you get the idea all right so this is our boxy knot bag and if I didn't do all of my talking it would whip up really fast but I want to show you a faster way to do these guys without the boxed corners so this right here you can see the straight edge the straight edge there are two different methods that you can do but this I think is so cute just having that let me pull over this is what you're getting Okay, when you've got those box corners, all right, just adorable. But let me show you again, if you're going to make a whole bunch of these and you want to make these really, really fast, we're going to take our fabric. I've just got a lining fabric here. I didn't put any SF-101 on here, but you get the idea. All right, I just want to show you what it is we're going to be doing. I'm going to grab that ruler that I had earlier. The ruler that I had earlier, I'm going to line up right here. When I go to cut, I'm basically, and let's get this straight a little bit. All right, and do you see my fabric underneath there? I don't have it folded, so let's get that folded correctly. The whole point of this is to have fabric that we've cut. All right, I'm lining this up. I'm going to go ahead and cut here. When I get to there, past that, I'm basically going to go ahead and cut. All right? So we've done that. We're going to switch over to the other side. I'm going to plate this, place this along the edge. All right, we've done that. Next thing we're going to do is come down here. All I needed to do is hold this in place here. Once I got that area cut, then I move my hand here. I reposition this ruler. And you can see how far I've cut there. So we're going to cut to here. And then I move my hand to the ruler. There we go. All right, now you've got the bottom done. Cut around the top, cut around the top, cut around the top. And that whips this up super fast, super easy. So that's an option for you. Another option, let's go ahead and I'm just going to cut. Well, you get the idea of that. The other option is to grab at the bottom this area here. So we really do want to cut all of this. Let's get this nice and straight. Do you see the fold that I have here in that fabric? I want to make sure before I cut any further that this fabric here, this isn't a whole lot of stability here. So I do want to pull that fabric over. And the more fusible, the better, okay? So if you had the SF-101 on here, the more it's going to stay in place. All right, so you can see right here it's moved a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and bring here. We're going to cut inside of here. We're going to cut inside of here. Grab that 28 millimeter. And again, you could use the rotary cutter, but you would also want to go ahead and get those pin marks, the pen marks, I should say, and go mark that with your pen. So when you go to cut all of that excess, I don't have to worry about getting right inside, especially if you don't have the 28 millimeter rotary cutter. All right, see how I have a little bit of fabric there? That's basically seam allowance, but you know, it would be nice to have that lined up nicely. Okay, so we've done the boxy. Now the next method, that's one option. You would do that to the lining that we've done here, and you would do that to the outside fabric using a straight edge of ruler. This one here is part of my 
um, my two sets of rulers, the two by 12 and a half, and then I've got a two and a half by 15, I think, or 15 and a half, I can't remember which, but it's one of those uh, really cute projects that, um, you know, it makes a really cute project, but they're just great rulers, period. Okay, so I'm gonna lift this up, and then the next option is to do a curve and to do a curve. So what you can do with the curve is fold these over on top of each other, and you can take anything that you want, anything at all that's round, and basically trace around and do your curve. That's if you don't own my round offs. You could use a cup, you can use a bowl, you can use a plate, you can use a dish, you can use whatever. These round offs here, do you see how that's gonna give a nice small curve? And this one over here gives a much bigger curve. That's a 2.5. If I go to the medium, I've got a 2.25. Here's a 2.75. The 2.75 might be a nice one here. I'm lining up here, I'm lining up here, and do you see how that's gonna allow me to cut those curves? This is the one I like, so I'm just gonna cut around. And now let's look to see what we've got. And how cool is that? So we would do that for the lining. We would do that for the outer fabric. And now you've got a bag that instead of the square, instead of the boxed, it has a rounded edge. A lot of knot bags have the rounded edge. What I love about this template is very quickly and very easily, I've got the ability to do a boxed corner, I've got the ability to do a squared corner. I've got the ability to do the rounded corner. And with the round offs, these guys here, I've got four, I've got eight, and I've got 12 radiuses. If you don't know about these tools, I've got a bunch of videos. I haven't done one in a while, but this allows you to choose the radius that you want. So you can make it bigger or smaller. So the idea of using these in combination makes all the difference. All right, guys, so that is how you do my boxy knot bag with this template. Stay tuned because I'll have another video where I'm gonna show you how to do with the grommet. It's the same template, but we're gonna add a grommet here instead of having it go into the strap that we have here. I mean, that's adorable. That's adorable. But if you wanna step it up a notch, then having that grommet on there makes all the difference in the world. And this is a great gift to make. This is a great gift to sell. This is a great gift just to carry around town for yourself. So, the boxy knot bag. Boxy, because it's box corners, knot bag, Japanese knot bag, so it's a combination. Where do you find this? On my website, winterdesigns.com. Lots of you are telling me that you're having problems. I shouldn't say lots, but I have several of you that tell me you can't get to Winter Designs. I'm not sure why. Winterdesigns.com. Click on products and templates. When you get to products and templates, we're going to, in the search box, if you type in knot, K-N-O-T, K-N-O-T, that's going to allow you to see, first thing, boxy knot bag template. And that template is the one that we're looking at right here. I love this template. I just think it's going to be a whole lot of fun. To me, it's the perfect size to carry around town, to do your quick jaunts, to do whatever night on the town. If you're going out for a special dinner, you know, again, I had several people tell me this would be great to wear around your wrist when you're out dancing and you don't want to lose this thing. You don't want to put it down. You don't want to take the chance of having it disappear. So you've got it right there on your wrist. So the boxy knot bag template, I think is a whole lot of fun. You guys let me know what you think. Like, comment, share if you would, since that allows me to do more of these videos and bring to you lots more ideas and lots of projects and those kinds of things. Thanks for watching and be on the lookout for this video. It's gonna be with a twist. So the boxy knot bag with a twist. Thanks guys.